in a way, we've wrapped up this uh, s section of videos about particle systems, but there's like two little topics that I want to tack on to the end here. One is a, a kind of a strange thing happened that I, I don't know if I really intended, but in, in our efforts to really focus on the array list, inheritance, organizing this sort of collection of particles, we, we took a few steps backwards. If you notice in the particle system class in these examples, the particle has a constant acceleration. There's no apply force method. But really, we do want our particle systems to exist in the world we've built where objects that are moving around can respond to forces. And this is going to become very necessary when we get to some future examples where we build these systems of objects that, that interact with each other through forces, a flocking system, a crowd uh, system. Um, those examples are really going to need particle systems where the particles can respond to forces from the environment or forces between each other. So what I wanted this video to do is just look at adding <coughs> the apply force method back in. But this is not as simple as it may seem. It's actually quite simple, but it's not as uh, obvious as it might seem like, oh, well, all we got to do is just add the apply force method back in. But let's, let's think about this. Let's map this out for a moment before we come and put this in our code. So we have a particle class. This we know about. This we've written. This is the thing we've been making all along. Mover, particle, it's all the same thing. Now, we have a particle system class. Our particle system class has the array list. It manages the collection of particles. What's in our main program? In our main program, we have setup, we have draw, and what are we doing? We are, we, we're making a particle system, a new particle system. And we're saying, hey, the particle system should be displayed, and the particle system should be updated. Notice here, <laughs> in this sort of main program, and if I go back over here, it's the same thing. Notice here in this main program, we are not referring to any particles. How do we apply a force to the particle? Well, in order to apply a force to the particle, we need to say particle system dot apply force some force, that's going to apply the force to the system, which will in turn apply the force to every single particle. So again, this is maybe sort of a small detail, but one thing we need to realize once we've sort of organized ourselves in this principle is when we want to act on individual particles, we have to act on them through the, through the particle system. So we apply a force to the particle system. The particle system is going to have apply force method, which is going to apply a force to all the particles. So let's go and add that into this example. And this is going to be, I swear, it's going to be less than five minutes, this video. I'm very excited. I didn't turn the timer on. So OK, so we know what we want to do is say something like, hey, there is a p vector called gravity. It looks something like this. And we want to say, apply that force, gravity, to the entire particle system. Well, what did we used to have in our programs in days of yore, right? In our particle class, we had a function called apply force, which took in a p vector. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip mass right now. You can add that back in. And we added that force into acceleration. And our update method, we just remember one of the things we would do is we would Clear out acceleration. Uh, we would clear out acceleration at the at the at the end of the update method because um, that's something we worked on before. Go back and watch the video. Link to it. Magic internet machine thing um, um, that you remember. So this is what we had before. Newton's law: force equals mass times acceleration. We're accumulating the forces in acceleration. We run this. Uh, okay. So so. So now, of course, we run this, but remember, we only put the apply force method in the particle class. We now need to put that apply force method in the particle system class. So here in the particle system class, we need to write a function called apply force. And what does that function do? It receives a force. And what happens here? When we apply a force to a particle system, we need to, in turn, apply that force to every single particle. For Every particle p in particles, p dot apply force force. So this may seem sort of silly and redundant, and perhaps it is, but this is our methodology now. 
We send something into the particle system, it receives it, it runs a loop through all the particles and sends that to the particle objects itself. And now when we run this, we can see this looks pretty similar to what we had before because we're applying this gravity force. But notice now, I could say, hey, if mouse pressed, make a p vector called wind, which sends stuff off to the right, and apply that force. So now we've, all that work we did in chapter two and all those examples, we now have here. I click the mouse, and all of a sudden the particles are blowing off to the right. I let go of the mouse, and the wind has stopped. So this is really important. We don't want to lose all of this work we did. We now, our particle system can now also receive forces and pass those along to the particles. And we can see, I just want to point out to you that there's, you know, so this is essentially example 4.6, if you're following along in the book. But there's also an example 4.7 where, and one additional slightly more advanced example that I want to show you, just in the same way we might take a vector and pass it through the particle system's apply force, which will then in turn send it to all of the particles, we can do that with anything. If there is a repeller object in our world, in this particular example, there's a repeller object that repel, that that, that has a force that repels particles, we could, uh, uh, we could send that repeller object through a particle system function, in this case called apply repeller, which in turn, if we go and look at that method, right, apply force takes a vector and passes that to the apply force method, apply repeller, whoops, fancy computer, what does apply repeller do? It goes through all of the particles, calculates the repelling force, and then applies it. So the, the point of what we're doing here is, is, is just to say that we can't access, we are not accessing the particles individually anymore in our main program. We're accessing them through the particle system. And you can see an example, our first example just sent vectors in through an apply force, but if we have other objects that communicate, we can send them through another method as well. So, um, <laughs> so okay, so what I would suggest to you is go back, take, if you've been working on that particle system, maybe you've got it with all sorts of uh, crazy different kinds of particles that inherit from the main particle class, now try to make sure you're modeling forces with that. Go back and make sure you have that apply force method. And one of the things that's really interesting to think about that you might try as an exercise, we're going to look at this a lot more in future videos, is could you make a particle system where the particles all apply forces to each other. So for every particle, apply a force to every other particle. What would that mean to do? That's kind of a difficult problem. Um, and I, I want to say more about it, but I'm going to leave it at that. And we'll look at it more. Uh, we're certainly going to look at it more once we get to flocking systems, because that's exactly what a flocking system is. OK, I think there's one more video left to make. Uh, and I'm going to do that right now. But you don't need to watch it right now, because you could go do something else, like pee or have a snack. Whatever people do when they're not just in a room by themselves talking to a camera. Goodbye.